Over the past few months, RN Breakfast has investigated concerns over the effectiveness of ionisation smoke alarms. Now, a retired smoke alarm tester has spoken publicly for the first time, denying allegations that he's been involved in a cover-up that's cost more than $100,000 since the 1950s. Ionisation smoke alarms are blamed for deaths, including those of celebrity chef Matt Galinsky's wife and three children on Queensland's Sunshine Coast in 2011. Retired American fire safety engineer Richard Bukowski has defended his landmark research that found the alarms gave sufficient warning to escape. Annie Guest reports. The accusation that he buried data showing poor performance by a smoke alarm that's blamed for the deaths of at least 100,000 people over 60 years is described by Richard Bukowski as... These conspiracy theories, these wild claims, they're not true. Mr Bukowski was a key researcher on landmark reports in the 1970s and 2000s. Ionisation detectors are blamed for tens of thousands of Australian deaths, including those of celebrity chef Matt Galinsky's wife and three children in 2011. Friends and family gathered on the Sunshine Coast today to farewell the family of celebrity chef Matt Galinsky. A chapel was open to the public to allow the community to pay their respects. The, to the research family. by Mr Bukowski and others was commissioned by the US's lead industry safety body, Underwriters Laboratories, and later the government's National Institute for Standards and Technology. The research is relied on by fire brigades and the fire safety industry worldwide. The studies found average delays of 15 minutes to one hour in the response of ionisation alarms to smoulder. But these delays weren't explicitly stated in the reports, known as Dunes 1 and 2. Smouldering fires are often linked to fatal overnight blazes, where people have been asleep before the detector sounds. RN Breakfast revealed earlier this year that while the reports and media releases said ionisation and photoelectric alarms gave sufficient warning to escape a fire. They also contained tabulated data showing ionisation alarms had significant delays. The alarms had been approved for use from 1954 by Underwriters Laboratories, where Mr Bukowski was later employed as a senior fire safety engineer. Mr Bukowski says the smoke detector's delays were inconsequential, but that's disputed by 93-year-old fellow fire safety engineer Richard Patton. Underwriters Laboratories approved a defective device. Many people died because it went in and it didn't work. And then when they did the uh, tests, he at the end had the, had the data and claimed that the smoke detectors worked fine. In other words, he whitewashed it. And uh, by then, uh, he was in so deep, and underwriters was in so deep, uh, nobody, wanted to, no, nobody wanted to say that the emperor had no clothes, so to speak. Ionisation and photoelectric smoke alarms have technology that produces different performance characteristics. Ionisation alarms have been the cheaper, more common device, and they're believed to be in most Australian homes. But photoelectric alarms have been compulsory in other Australian buildings where people sleep, such as hospitals and hotels, since 2004. Authorities have been so concerned in Queensland and the Northern Territory that they've gone out on their own to mandate photoelectric alarms in all homes. In New Zealand, retailers began removing ionisation alarms from shelves earlier this year after research and recommendations from Consumer New Zealand. And the United States is introducing a tougher smoke alarm standard that includes a smouldering fire test that ionisation alarms are unable to pass, likely forcing them off the market by 2020. Mr Bukowski acknowledges the standard as a positive development, but denies his reports buried the ionisation alarms delay or that the delay is significant. It was pre presented in terms of escape time. And so if there was an hour delay between an ion and a photo in a smoldering fire, you would see an hour more escape time for the photo than you would for the ion. So it's there. 
in these escape time graphs, but it's not explicit in terms of, you know, th this is an issue. More than a decade ago, Australian fire safety experts lobbied for a higher standard, similar to that now adopted in the US. But the Australian Building Codes Board rejected the push. They consulted Mr Bukowski about his research. I can't say why Standard to Australia didn't adopt these new tests 10 years ago. I certainly never lobbied against uh, anything that Standards Australia was trying to do or ABCB was trying to do. The Australian Building Codes Board was unaware the US is adopting a new standard before RN Breakfast reported it in June. Senior board members have since sought briefings on the US changes, which are forecast to see photoelectric-based technology dominate the smoke alarm market. But regardless, Mr Bukowski argues the ionisation alarm's delay is immaterial. If you have a flaming fire, you may only have three minutes before things get deadly. So you got a boogie. If you have a smoldering fire, yeah, it may take the ionization alarm half hour, 45 minutes longer, but nothing gets dangerous for an hour. But that's a misleading way to think about the data, according to a member of Underwriters Laboratories Smoke Alarm Committee, Jay Fleming. He's also Boston's Deputy Fire Chief and has been at the forefront of campaigning for higher standards for ionisation alarms. He told RN Breakfast earlier this year that the research found that in smouldering fires involving synthetic furniture, occupants could be trapped by smoke and eventually killed by the fumes before an ionisation alarm responded or within two minutes of the alarm going off. The major smoke alarm manufacturers, Snyder Electric and United Technologies Corporation, have repeatedly ignored or declined interview requests and have never publicly responded to allegations ionisation alarms are deadly. Any guest reporting there. And the federal government has previously referred RN Breakfast to the Australian Building Codes Board, which has said there's no evidence ionisation alarms are responsible for deaths.